Wealthy people have the freedom of time. They're not always available, but it's not because they are busy. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I have some information I'd love to share with you. So, I did a video a couple weeks back you know I, I forget the name of the the, the the title of the video but it was something like um, like five lessons I've learned from my really wealthy friends or something to that effect and just combing through the comment section I realized that you know it's a video that you guys have, have really enjoyed so it I got the idea maybe I should do a part two because guys really and truly you know I have all of this information in my head that I've been taught by my you know wealthiest friends probably they have taught me outright or just by observing them i've learned so much that's one of the reasons why my clients get the results that they get is because i'm operating from a perspective of not just solid financial you know facts or financial information but just these little principles that my friends teach me i impart um with respect to my clients so i just want to share a few more with you and let me give you a little bit of a story right so there's one particular friend i learned i've learned a lot from him and i find that my most fundamental my most profound um thoughts or or lessons have come from him so i called him and i said hey first of all hey i'm back in jamaica how are you <laughs> and he's like you know basically if you're friends with me, you know that I'm like a loose cannon. So as it relates to, you know, my location, I just do whatever I want to do. Okay. So he's like, hi, Anna, blah, blah, blah. So I said, here, what? listen, I did a YouTube video with some of the lessons that you taught me. He's like, wait, stop, stop, stop. You have a YouTube channel? And he's like, are you one of those like, you know, play pranks? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I teach financial material on YouTube. And he was like, really? He asked me to send me send me send him my channel information. I sent it, and guys, I ended up getting a whole. He ended up sending me a whole WhatsApp message with like ten or so principles that he wanted me, or ten or so lessons that he wanted me to share with you. I'm not gonna share all ten in the interest of time. I'm probably gonna. Do, in fact, I call another one. Well, I message one of my other friends to ask him. You know what? lessons he would want to share so i'm not going to share all 10 of my first friends lessons i'm probably going to share like three and then two from my other friends so that we can have all this information or as much as possible in this video so the first thing i'm going to talk about i'm actually going to give you six because the first one i'm going to talk about is is not something that either of them told me but it's something that i have observed and i just want to clear the air with respect to this because i've heard this way too many times that the wealthy is wealthy because they don't share any information and they keep the information to themselves in my experience guys if you don't know my background I, like i never grew up wealthy i never grew up with links or any of that like believe it or not people always look at my last name and assume i'm from upper st andrew they always assume that i grew up wealthy yeah, no, not the case at all. Not the case at all. Mm -mm. I learned all the things that I know now just by connecting with genuine people. And the first lesson I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you, is that it's not that wealthy people don't want to share information to, 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 to less wealthier people to, for them to better their portfolio. Let me tell you, I figured it out. It's this. Wealthy people think of their time with respect to a monetary value right and it's not that they don't want to share it's just that the trade-offs are not there so they're not going to invest all this money and all this time to um you know launch this big campaign to educate people on financial literacy or financial matters the trade-off just isn't there right but if you were to approach them what i've learned if you were to approach them most times they're more than willing or more than happy to assist or to teach you things especially the older ones they are in guys in my experience when you approach an older wealthier person man or woman 
and you just come from a place of genuineness and you're like hey listen so this is my position and this is what i'm trying to do this is what i'm trying to get and i really respect you know what you've done and i just really would love to learn from you believe me they are gonna teach you oh you think me know some of my things i me know i just approach these people and talk and build a genuine relationship with them and because i build a genuine genuine relationship with them they are going to just share things they want to help it's just that the trade-offs are not there for them to launch this international campaign oh educate you know educate people educate the masses it's just not that but they're more than willing to help that's the first thing that i'd like to share the second thing is uh, the first tip from my friend and the first friend and he said that you need to not ignore compound interest you cannot afford to ignore compound interest compound interest is how you get wealthy he said guys i'm gonna do a lot of he said he said here because i'm trying to give it to you as i got it <laughs> essentially but essentially you know those dividend checks that you get you're probably investing now you probably just started your investment journey and you get a dividend check of like 300 jamaican dollars and you fling it down you never cash the check right because you're like this is not this can go buy a party and a cocoa bread right so you're just fling it down well you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to reinvest all of this money because money on top of money gives you more money and it gives you free money do not underestimate the power of compound interest compound interest is said to be the eighth wonder of the world you need to understand that listen guys first of all it's money on top of money. What do you think is gonna happen? Money on top of money is gonna breed more money. That's how you do it. If you were to just invest your money alone and full stop, it's gonna grow a lot slower than if you were investing twice the amount, three times the amount, and it's not even your money, compound interest, really? So you need to not ignore that. His next tip is you cannot afford to be emotional. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. I'm a woman and I don't really want to say what I'm about to say, but I mean, the statistics are there, okay? And I've experienced it myself. I've observed it myself. As women, we tend to make decisions from a more emotional point of view, from a more emotional place. What I've noticed is that for men, they tend to not do that. They tend to make decisions from a very rational um, perspective, right? So I forever since like a long time i've been a very pro pros and cons kind of girl hell i have a big ass whiteboard in the middle of my living room nobody believes me until they come you know one of my friends came here over the weekend and I, i've been talking about my whiteboard all this time he comes in he's like oh that's the whiteboard and i'm like that's not my whiteboard when he walked into the living room and he saw the whiteboard he was like D guys my whiteboard is almost the length of my ceiling to my floor okay and it's wide why because when i make decisions i make decisions from a very rational perspective from a very rational point of view it's a it's a strict it's a black and white thing for me when i keep telling you guys that i operate like a robot y'all don't believe me and this is why i how i operate like a robot i remove my emotions from the equation because i'm telling you i don't know if it's a woman thing or what but if i don't do that my emotions are gonna take over and i'm gonna make decisions based on my emotions which may not most times it, it doesn't work out well there's a reason why women make decisions oh my heart is telling me to do this men don't do that i'm telling you go research it yourself i'm a woman i don't want to say these things but it's it's stats and i i can tell you from my own perspective i don't know about you if you're a woman but if you're honest with yourself you know that's the truth you know for example if there would one boy and they see the boy the, the signs are there that the boy had your bone but my heart tells me that he's not giving me bone and you stay with the boy because the boy not your bone guys <laughs> you know that what i'm saying is the truth so what he says is that you need to make decisions from a rational point of view, turn off your emotions, and it almost always comes down to your pros and cons list, okay? He never taught me that, but the fact that he repeated that, I had to put it on this list. Pros and cons. Perfect example. When I was in Colombia, y'all know that my heart is in Colombia. <laughs> like, I love Colombia. I love everything about Colombia. I haven't discovered one thing that I don't love about Colum about Medellin, actually. I haven't discovered one thing that I, haven't, that I don't love. When I was over there, I was like, should I come back home or should I just stay there? Should I come back home or should I stay there? I got booked for some jobs and the way how Medellin have my heart, guys, I was literally trying to figure out, should I come back home or should I stay there? Should I try to find a way to make these virtual, like make up some sort of excuse or something like, it? like what should I do? You know what I did? I went to my pros and my cons list and I turned off my emotions because my emotions, I would have been in Colombia right now. Do you understand? So same thing. 
money monetarily money wise you need to it rational rational you're in a job that you've been in a, this job for five years and your income has only increased by 10 percent in the last five years when inflation is at 10 percent you it can be an emotional decision of oh i'm so afraid blah 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 yeah you're afraid but go be afraid and act at the same time you understand you need to go to the whiteboard pros and cons what if i were to leave and find another job bam pros bam cons that's how you need to cut and move and go through life if you want to be wealthy guys the third i don't remember where i'm at right now but the next tip is that and i'm not really honest with you i have noticed this wealthy people don't think of themselves as wealthy people like really wealthy people don't consider themselves as really wealthy people you know why most times when you examine their circle they are probably the poorest in their circle in their most intimate circle they're probably the poorest why because wealthy people tend to be very thirsty for knowledge and they always want to do better and better and better you're not gonna, if you are the best in your group you're not gonna grow right so i find that for my wealthy friends i don't know about all the wealthy people in the world but i'm talking about my wealth friends and when i say wealthy friends guys i'm telling you these people have net worths of over five two to five hundred million jamaican dollars right um there's one that i know is over 500 million jamaican dollars and the only reason why i know this is because this company is listed but you see the one that send all of this over 200 million jamaican um 200 million jamaican dollars they are they surround themselves with people who can teach them things they're very teachable and it's not just wealthy wealthy people that they surround themselves with they're like very they're willing to listen to anybody once they detect that this person has sense they're willing to listen and, and see, you know, pick sense out of nonsense or if it's just nonsensical, they're not going to even be there. But they don't think that anybody is too low for them to learn from. They want to learn from everybody because they tend to be thirsty for knowledge and they always want to grow. So because their focus is on that and not, oh, I'm so wealthy, look at me. They tend to not even, you know, they just, that's why when you see really wealthy people, most times you don't even know. Most times you don't even know. The ones who flash off and bling bling out, I have nothing else to say. All right, so we're gonna jump over to my other friend. So this friend, his net worth is way up there too. Like way, way up there. His portfolio is both in Jamaica and in the States, way up there. And this thing that I'm gonna share with you, I've, I say this all the time, but I want you to see, it's not a me thing. It's like a, you know, it's a thing. He said, you need to watch your spend on entertainment, nightlife, and designer goods. He said, you should not even be buying designer goods, period, if you're trying to build, period, period, period. No, you're not going to treat yourself for your birthday. You're not going to do none of that and go buy no Louie. No, period, period, period. Kid you not. Period, none, zero, zilch, nada, why? If you are trying to build, you need to commit to the ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal is to build to a net worth of XYZ. If you're going to commit to build to that end, ultimate end goal of XYZ, that you need to wake up, eat, eat, breathe, sleep that goal. And if you're going to do that, guys, you're going to go into Louie and drop 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 US dollars on a bag or a pair of shoes. And then you're going to tell me that, oh, your portfolio is not growing as, you know, at the, the speed at which it's supposed to be growing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at you in a Gucci belt and Louis shoes. I'm not going to take you seriously. Your portfolio is not going to grow as quickly as you want it to because you're not committed to the goal. Zero designer goods. Zero. You need to watch your entertainment spend. I, I, I said, not, these are not my words. In fact, let me open iMessage right now. He says, let go of high-end brand goods while you are building. And secondly, watch your spend on entertainment and nightlife. So all those who want to party and go, first of all, you're bust buckle, man, you're bust buckle, bust buckle. Yeah, let go off for that. Let go off for that. Listen, I understand if you're like, a, a, you know, you appreciate alcohol, help. Have you met me? I'm a rum girl. <laughs> Everybody in a Jamaican supposed to know say Miss a rum, Miss a rum girl, right? But guys, if you want to do that, don't go spend 30, 40 grand on a bottle in a party when you can go down to the liquor store and buy for 10 grand. That's actually, yes, these are accurate numbers, you know. These are accurate numbers. But no, most people want to go up in a party and boss buckle and the sparks and the flat. Don't let go off of that. Let go off of that. You need to go back to your why. Why are you trying to get wealthy? Are you trying to get wealthy to prove that you want to get wealthy? Because I'm going to insert my thing now, something that I've learned. I don't know where I learned it from, but I tell my client this all the time. You see, the wealthier you get, <laughs> the more you're going to realize that, the, the more under the radar you're going to want to be. I'm telling you, the more money you start getting, 
the more exposed you're going to feel and the more you're going to want to fly under the radar. Not illegally, just like you don't want nobody to know your business. I'm telling you. Next tip, you can't escape business. <laughs> so for all of you are gonna say, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't have business head, I'm gonna like business. You can't escape it if you want to be wealthy. Your nine to five is not going to get you to a place of wealth. You have to have some sort of business to supplement your nine to five income. Why? The income from your business is unlimited. So, if you want to build to this goal of wealth, I remember on this channel, we know the difference between rich and wealthy. If you want to be wealthy, the 9 to 5 isn't going to cut it. So, you need to go get comfortable with business. Go read what you need to read. Go talk to some more business people. Whatever you need to do, but it's not going to cut it. You can't escape business. I tell my clients this all the time. Here's the thing. Most people are paid based on their time. Wealthy people are paid are paid based on their value that is why you know somebody will come and talk for 10 minutes and bam it's two thousand us dollars it's not about the time meanwhile two thousand us dollars you are worth 30 30 day 30 night and that's not even your paycheck right it's not about that most people get paid according to their time wealth people get paid according to their value and most of them that leads off to business so you can't afford to ignore this arena the last tip i'm going to give you i think i've gone way over like whatever i don't have them numbered but um let me see which one i want to talk about i love this one so i used to think that oh i need to be so busy to be making money blah 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 no 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 fam so here's the thing wealthy people have a freedom of time they are most times not available not because they are busy but because they don't want to talk to you they don't want to go there they don't want, they don't want to do that but they have the freedom of time they can do whatever they want to do so i'm sure if you were to call michael leaching he's gonna be unavailable and people are gonna assume he's so he's gonna be unavailable because he's so rich and he's so busy and he's doing all this work michael leaching is probably sitting in his boxes right now in his living room somewhere in some corner of the earth like to, i don't know playing playstation i don't know what michael leaching does but just for what he's doing but if you're to call his office or call his team they're gonna tell you he's unavailable wealthy people have the freedom of time they're not always available but it's not because they are busy okay all right look i'm gone way over time i hope this video helps you i was so excited to do this video guys um because there's I, I think this is gonna be the last part of this thing if you want me to do a part three i can you can let me know in the comment section but there's so much I want you to know. I'm so grateful for this platform. You don't even understand. <laughs> I'm so grateful for this platform. If you've ever met me in real life, you know that one of the worst things you, well, best or worst, depending on how you look at it, is if you come up to me and you say, hey, Anna, you know what I've been trying to do, blah, 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 and we start talking. Let me tell you, the last time this happened, I was in Fridays a week ago, and I met. The, I actually went in to get a strawberry um, mojito to go, emphasis on to go i literally walked and it's like hey mona can i get a strawberry mojito to go and this guy was sitting here and he's like wait aren't you anna and i'm like yes hi and he got he started talking about growth and finance stuff guys i sat there talking to him for like two hours i kid you not what's his name again he's on the channel he's on this channel. listen if you're watching this video please drop a comment and let them know that you are real <laughs> i'm telling you because i want to share it's just that more people now have access to the channel. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share so that more people can get, uh, get in touch with this content. 